Ma, you don't have to tell me that you saw a bad comment. Uh -huh. I'm trying to avoid all of that. You should try and avoid it too. My boy passion fans, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey Adam G, your online queen's relational talk show. For today's content, I'm giving you another treat out, a special treat out. As I will be interviewing your favorite beauty queen. We all came to love and really followed her journey since 2017. And up until now, we're still mesmerized by her beauty, caliber, and substance. And for today's content, I am so privileged to be given this opportunity to interview the one and only Miss Pauline mm -hmm. Amelie. Hi, Adam. <laughs> Hi, What Pauline. an intro, my goodness. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, Uli. And belated happy birthday. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so how old are you now? <laughs> 28. <laughs> okay, so he just yes. turned 28 this year. Mm -hmm. So you know. Yon. And congratulations as well for winning, for receiving the Global Icon Award. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. The thank other you. Night. That was last night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, how, so how does it feel like you've been receiving a lot of accolades and recognitions left and right since no. your recent <laughs> international pageant journey? It's, it feels, of course, nice to somehow be recognized for your things that you've done. But uh, what I also mentioned last night is that I'd like to just keep that as a reminder that it doesn't end there when you get the award. The, that journey and that commitment still continues even afterwards. And of course, it's not just me. I mean, it's an entire team of empowered people that also help me get to do what I, what I have been doing, like in terms of community or even in my pageant journey, for example. So there's many more people that I need to thank for that also. Nice. So you're at the peak of your pageant career now. Talaga ba? <laughs> oh, no! Just go! Ang laki kaya ng fan base mo, not just here but abroad. I came from Thailand mm. last week. How was it? Kinakamusta ka nila sa akin. Oh, really? Ako naman, si Lavina ang hinahabol ko. How's Pauline? You know, mm -hmm. I, I've been watching your vlogs and I really love Pauline Amelinks. Oh, ganyan, that's ganyan. so sweet. We love beauty queens like Pauline. Ganyan, ganyan. So talagang, mamarka ka lang, not just only here in the Philippines, oh, but abroad. Nice yeah. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yeah. And bakit naman you're not yet at the peak of your career? Hello. I was just like, well, you can always still... Angat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yun na. Pwede pa daw umangat. Yun na yung mga clothes. Of course. Clothes. <laughs> always naman. So, in your, in your whole pageant career so far, how do you make out this? How do you uh, sum up your whole pageant journey? Wow. Uh, it was, it was, I guess it started through happy coincidence because I was such a boyish teenager. And it was my friends who, in school, pa, who like urged me to join uh, our intramurals pageant back then. And I just did it because of the plus points, because I was having a hard time with med tech. And then uh, like another opportunity came after that, and I also decided, oh, you know, why not? Let's see where it goes. Up to such a point that I actually found myself enjoying uh, the pageant journey, so it was definitely a memorable, like all, the, all those years, a memorable experience and definitely don't regret uh, anything. Wait, you said med tech? Yeah. So I took up med tech first. That's when I joined uh, Miss Intramurals in CDU. But then on my third year, I really couldn't take it anymore. And that's when I realized uh, it's not something I want to do. I realized I was just really doing it for my mom. Shout out to you, Ma. <laughs> yeah, hello, Tita. <laughs> yes, and uh, I realized that Parang it doesn't make sense if I'm not doing it for me since I'll be the one working as, as, as a medtech if ever. And if I don't see myself working as a medtech or if I don't see myself proceeding with medicine, then what am I doing now? Mm -hmm. So after I got my, my final grade after my first semester in my third year, I failed the subject, which meant I had to repeat the, the first semester, which meant I couldn't take my second semester subjects. So yung four years, magiging five years. Uh -oh. So I told myself, I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh -oh. I'm not doing that. So I cried to my mom. I asked her, can I please shift to a course that I want? And again, she, she allowed me to take, up. to take up international studies, but still in CDU. Yeah, because it's a bagay din sa heritage, mo, diba? Kasi you, you, I mean, 
because of your yeah. multicultural background. And it background. was a major in European studies naman. So uh -huh. I really, I was able to take in like my experience from living in Belgium for a few years also. But when you were younger then, when you were a kid, I mm -hmm. mean, kasi ngayon, syempre, di ba, gandang-ganda kami sa'yo. Pero <laughs> back when you were nine years old, ten years old, how was the little Pauline like? Was it, was, were you popular in school? Oh, no. Because of your looks? Were you this bibong bibo? I, I think I was only, like, um, noticed whenever I was here in the Philippines for my summers. But back in Belgium, I kind of like blended in and I just had a very small group of friends. But popular is definitely not a, a word I'd use to describe nine-year-old me. I had bangs that my dad cut for me. So no, I wasn't, I wasn't a popular kid. <laughs> so, so if you weren't a popular kid then, and for sure feeling ko shy, Karen, I assume you're Super. very shy. So how na you to the world of joining beauty pageants? Yeah, I was I was enticed my very first pageant because of plus points, but I ended up really enjoying it. Yeah, because you got plus points in your subjects if you would join Miss Intrams. Ah, <laughs> so pinilit ka so mali na Miss Intrams. Not really pinilit, but then I was having a hard time already back then. So I thought maybe if I join and if I do well, those plus points might actually really help me. Uh -huh. And they did, thank you. <laughs> thank goodness. But uh, yes, what you call this? I I was a very shy kid before and. It was it was really just curiosity, I think, uh -huh. that that led me or that really started my my pageant journey. Because I ended up really enjoying my very first pageant because it was a performance, and uh -huh. apparently the shy kid really liked performing. And parang it's a, I was a different person on stage than I was off stage. It was something that I could turn on, and I enjoyed it. So, so from Miss Intrams, you can see so. Could I say that was some sort of a baptism of fire for you to finally join provincial pageants? Mm -hmm. Definitely, yes. But I had two pageants in between um, Miss Intrams and joining Miss Bohol. I joined uh, Sinuluk Festival Queen in 2014 uh -huh. and in 2015 I joined Mut um, Anyag Satubigun, which uh -huh. is the municipal pageant in Bohol that I joined prior to joining Miss Bohol. What did your parents mo? Especially your mom. My mom, of course, will always be very supportive. My dad was more strict, especially since I was still a student, a college oh. student back then. So he told me, or he advised me uh, to wait. But then I told my dad, like, it's now, or it's now, or I wait another year. And I don't want to wait another year. And it was summer vacation also, but I was taking up summer classes. Uh -huh. So I, I told my dad, no, I can make it and still pass my subjects. So he allowed me to join. But I also noticed or realized that it was a lot easier for me to join pageants after graduating uh, mm, college. Because I, ha I was having kind of a hard time during Sinulog and Anyag Satubigon balancing my classes and also the trainings and the practices for those pageants. And when I joined Miss Bohol, I was a fresh grad, so I had no classes to think of, unlike some of the other girls back then. So I, I really realized that it was one, more efficient and easier, but also two, that experience of college also really helps you when it comes to joining the pageant itself, like in Q&A, for example. Alright. Mm -mm. So, okay lang sa parents mo na sumali. And then, <laughs> <laughs> my dad has always, my dad was like, not really the contra, but always would always ask me, are you sure you want to join another time? Like, um, you don't, I know, how about your job or how about your income? How about your time and stuff like that and my but my mom was always like I know if you want to do it I'll always support you I just don't want you to get hurt but if you decide to go then I will always be there for you and you know what I like about your parents is that napansin ko all throughout your pageant career they seem to be very low-key oh yeah it's uh -oh. only this year that my mom <laughs> stage mom. became no not really stage mom but because of the power of social media and the internet I guess the videos that other people take uh, somehow also made her like a minor celebrity in uh -huh. in Tubigon and in Bohol, because people now also recognize her. Yes, like, yes. Ayan yung mom ni Pauline. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, but still up to this point, my parents are very very low key. Yeah. Pero kaya ako tama tina nung kasi yon, because syempre, it's not easy for someone like you, especially for aspiring beauty queen bago palang to join a beauty pageant, especially mm -hmm. at this age of social media where everything is magnified. So. Yeah. So, in those three years or five years that you have been competing nationally, 
how were they how were they able to take it all in for you considering na ramdam talaga namin na gustong gusto mo talaga Mm-mm. to represent our country in an international stage i mean my my parents yes oh they were i mean my mom didn't have any facebook up to two years ago ata and she mm-hmm. only created a facebook account for the sake of being able to support me online and to be able to share whatever posts or voting needs mm-hmm. to our family or our neighbors so uh, they became even more supportive because of that uh, through social media and even my dad who doesn't have any social media at all still used uh, YouTube to like watch videos of, of, of me uh, performing or mga reviews about me and stuff like that so he would also know so he'd call me up and be like oh I just read the review about you and apparently you did a really good job congratulations so they were really able to take in all the good as well but it was my mom who struggled taking in the negative comments that she would see. Then she would call me telling me, oh, I saw this bad comment. And I tell her, Ma, you don't have to tell me that you saw a bad comment. Uh-huh. I'm trying to avoid all of that. You should try and avoid it too. You're like, yeah, but I just saw it and I wanted to share. I'm like, Ma, please, if you see a bad comment, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Siguro feeling ko, siguro finally, siguro the reason, feeling ko lang to, ah, based from all your, your cuentos right now so far, the reason why they also allowed you was probably, uh, you had a mentor from the very beginning to Mm-mm. guide you. And I'm talking about Mama Mikey. Oh, of course. Yeah, because enduring enduring your relationship with your two since 2017. And of course, I'm the ako yung parent. Of course, since I'm not always in the province, I won't always be in Manila to follow you. I'm more excited to see that I'm parang, I know, pointing or I, I know someone Mm-mm. who's going to take For sure. care of you take care of me yes. when I'm doing all these uh, pageant stuff. So, what's the secret to your long sta- long standing relationship with Mama Mikey? Mm. Talagang hindi kayo nagkabitawan. <laughs> nagkabitawan <laughs> that's true. Since 2017. Yes, that's true. And we'll, she, she, was, she started out as a mentor, but now I can also add friend to that. Uh-huh. Because we've, we've gotten really so close. And I think... Uh, Honesty, kindness, and respect really played such an important role in that because I valued her as a mentor even from way in the beginning, her opinion and everything. Yeah. And I, the relationship that we had, I also drew a line. Okay, now she's my mentor, so I need to treat her that way. And then when we're not doing rehe- doing trainings, rehearsals, or fittings, okay, she's my friend, so I can treat her in a different way, but still with the same kind of kindness and and respect, of course. Doon ko lang doon ko unang nakita yung loyalty mo. Kasi let's face it, mm-hmm. especially with your MUP journey, you, you joined three times. And for someone like you na who has done it over and over again, it's easy for you mm-hmm. to become independent, you know, change your uh, oh, team. Oh my gosh, I I don't know if I would say that if it's easy to become independent kasi I have some friends who also became or decided to run independently. Mm-hmm. And everything becomes so much more difficult. Like, you have to be the one to arrange everything, to connect everything. And Mama Mikey made that so much easier for me because she already had her connection. So I could so easily reach out to her and then she'd be able to work her magic and then arrange those things for me. So, uh, Mama Mikey, thank you so much for all of the, all those years of, of connecting people for my journey. But yes, that's, that's one really beautiful aspect also of being part of aces and queens because i can't imagine having to to take on all those all those other things that you need to think about when you're doing your shoots when you're doing your trainings or your fittings the designers that you need to contact and everything if you have to do that all on your own that's so much added stress pressure worry on your shoulders when you're supposed to try and focus on on your own trainings or on your mental health for example so yeah yeah, it's, it's not, I know, it's, it's not easy. Pala, kasi ang deep na ng relationship niyo, Mm-mm. to the point na whenever you're constantly bashed, she would really take a bullet for you. Talaga nakikipagwarda. Yes, That's, so, yes so I know media. that. She also tells me that sometimes. And sometimes she also becomes uh, the victim. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes mm-hmm. she, the, the bashing is directed towards her. And I know that a lot of people online have also somehow in the comment section suggested, oh no, she should go independent and things like that. And that's where my loyalty also was, was of course, tested. Because Mama Mikey became, wasn't just a mentor, she was also my friend. And it wasn't necessarily about, um, 
me keeping her because she's a good stylist or because she uh, designs the clothes herself and, and has uh, an atelier to make it. But it's because that, that value of friendship that, added, that was added to our relationship was the deciding factor. Like, I don't want to lose my friend. Like, mm -hmm. yes, I, I could maybe look for another stylist, but I don't want to do that. I already have one, and she's my friend. And it's that emotional and mental support that she gives me all throughout those journeys that made me want her to still stick around for me. Mm -hmm. Among all the, in, the, in your three years uh, journey in MUP, what is the most memorable collaboration with Mama Mikey? The most memorable collaboration? Yeah. Because you, yeah. Wow, I'm going to have to reflect a little bit on that because we've been through a lot. <laughs> Many collaborations already. But when it comes to outfits, I think the one that, ex that needed the most creative effort on her part, I think, was this year competing for Poland. Oh. Because we, we ended up having, I think, five or six final gown options. Oh, you already got that press con. Oh, like five or six final. I'm, I, I lost count already, but more than five, I think. To such a point that when I arrived in Poland and I was told, now, okay, you have to decide which one to wear, I was like at a loss. Uh -huh. So having too many options isn't also a good thing, I think. Because it adds more pressure. Because I was going through the activities of the days and then also realizing, okay, finals is getting closer. I need to make my decision which one of those six or seven gowns that I'm going to wear. And then come, come like... The evening before a finals, I still hadn't made up my mind. We, fr from the seven gowns that you brought to Poland, mm -mm. Wala ka pang, you still couldn't make up with your mind up with those seven gowns yes. that you brought. Because sometimes you, you feel it, eh? Na, okay, this is it. But then when you have seven options, it's so difficult to have that feeling, na, okay, it's gonna be this one. Because then you have so many options and so many little details that you start to nitpick on. Yeah, oh, okay, but this gown is in this color and I like this color, but that gown has that flow effect and I also like that. Uh -huh. So it's all those little details that you're trying to then hyper focus on that you forget or that you're like incapable to make like a final decision. Thank you for sharing that. Because I think with girls like you bringing those plenty of gowns to your pageant venue, I think when Bago ka pa lang umalis, nakaset na with your stylist handlers, okay, this is the gown that I'm gonna wear for prelims, this is the gown I'm gonna wear for finals. And ideally, then, uh -oh. ideally that's the situation. But uh, ideal situations like that don't always happen. And uh -huh. the reason why we had so many backup gowns, or so many, not really backup, but so many options, is because for MUPH this year, we didn't have uh, many options. And then, like, so much went on and so much uh, happened within the span of just a few hours on pageant day itself for Miss Universe Philippines that uh, we decided to make, like, somehow a last-minute decision to go with the white one that I had worn before in December or January for a bridal fair event in Bellevue, Bohol. Oh, all right. Because we had a gown already. Uh -huh. And then so many things went on and happened. And then that led us to make a decision last minute, we're going to go for the white one. All right. But I also read, I don't know if this is true, so this is your chance to finally confirm it. Mm -mm. Uh, was the gown that you were referring to that you were supposed to wear originally for MUPH finals or prelims was the one you ended up wearing for Miss Supranational prelims? Yes. The one made by Louis Pangilinan? Yes. Ah, okay. Mm -mm. Ang sexy nun, ha? Yes, it was. Uh -oh. It was. But uh, I guess we made a very good decision with the white one, though, uh, of wearing that at least during MUPH finals because... Uh, uh, Mama, how did Mama Mikey say it? She was like, in a sea of beads, your simplicity stood out in, with the white gown. So it was, it was, I think, one of the best decisions from, from that night. That oh, no, kasi nung gabi nanonood kami ng MUP, sabi ko, Oksana, I <laughs> yeah. also wore a yellow, a yellow, a similar outfit nung, yes. oh, oh. nung ang tawag doon, nung charity gala, yeah, except that it was night. color yellow. Mm -hmm. And bumabagay sa'yo. Yeah. Parang feeling ko, you could always play with it. That's true. And on I stage. only I only noticed that particular aspect of me liking to play around with it. Like during that journey also. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the first time that I wore the white one back in, in Bohol, like earlier that year. 
like oh it's fun pala to like play around with something and have that extra drama at least ah all right mm -hmm. so when it was time for you to compete for Miss Supranational. Hindi mo pa rin nakalimutan yung gown niyo ni Miss Sir Louis Pangilina. Oh no, of course because uh -oh. what you mo call it since we weren't able to to use it during MUPH, we did make a point na we, so during Supra we have to use it either finals or prelims. Oh, mm -mm. all right. So yon, yun ang kwento. <laughs> yun ang kwento. And yung paano naman yung gown mo, yung Larry Espinosa gown mm -hmm. mo. Nagulat kami doon ha, hindi namin akalain. <laughs> Was it part of the seven gowns that you were bringing no. to pool? No. So no. ganun talaga ka indecisive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I remember yata, the gown came from, was brought by Sir Jonas, right? Yes. Oh, it had a, a separate luggage for, uh -huh. for that gown. Talaga. And then after our, our rehearsals one day, uh, Mama Jay went to our resort and then he brought the suitcase and he said, Pao, you fit it. And then in, the, in, the, in one of the bathrooms at the back, para hindi naman masyado, you know, halata sa mga girls that would be passing by, I fit it. And he said that when he saw the black one on me, the Larry Espinosa, he said that this is it. This should be it. But by that time, I hadn't even made up my mind because I had seven other ano options. Yung, ano ba yung, uh, curious ako, ano ba yung gown na talagang gusto mo talaga sa otin among those seven no, because, gowns that you brought? No, because I, I had my mind actually set on a flowy gown. Like flowy more, gown flowy than, uh -huh. more flowy than the, 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 the single layer drape on the back. Uh -huh. Something that I could at least like at le have like one twirl with if I wanted to, and uh, maybe that was just stuck in my head at that point, mm -hmm. because all the other gowns that I brought were flowy, very flowy, ah, okay. and uh, I had never worn a black gown before, so seeing yeah. myself uh, in the black gown, I was like, is this really my color, <laughs> or is this really the absence mm -hmm. of my of the color mm -hmm. that I really of colors that I really want to go for, so. It just made it harder for me uh -huh. to decide because Mama Jay also told me that okay, we have you have your options now, but you have to decide. It's you who's going to be wearing mm -hmm. it. So uh, I did message Mama Jay. Uh, I think the night before, na Mama Jay, I still haven't made up my mind. I need your help. And then he he gave his his thoughts and his opinions that really helped me decide. Okay, let's go for the black one. And it was also so so easy to wear. Like, thank you so much, Larry Espinosa, for such a beautiful and easy to wear gown. Because it, it had no corset, it was stretched, it was really comfortable to wear. And I think you could see that on my face that I enjoyed also wearing it. For, for a gown that I had not, never fit before with the designer prior to that. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, so, Bumagay shot actually. It made mm -mm. that it made you stand out even more during the finals night. Thank you. It was very It uniform. was like the sexiest. No, the sexiest was the Louis Pangilinan gown. <laughs> Pero second to that, eto etong gown na yon. Kasi mm -hmm. nga, di ba, sabi mo you were you were uh, you were always in flowy dresses. Tapos yes. most of the time, lagi kang naka in pastels or in pink mm -mm. or magenta gowns, de ba? So. Kaya sabi ko, it really look refreshing in our eyes. Thank you. Diba? Especially with those embellishments. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Diba? Mm -mm. Pero alam mo, bukod sa gown, isa rin ang nagmarka sa amin palagi, laging constant uh, debate among pageant oh, fans, no. is no. your pasarela or your catwalk. Ah, really? <laughs> Pero on your third ride, earlier this year, when you were competing for MUP, we could really see the... The improvement. the improvement talaga, the stark improvement. Na talaga, mm -hmm. oh my God. And you were glowing on stage. And you were, Aww, thank you, I kept Adam. saying that on my commentary videos because talaga, you were finally parang enjoying it. Mm -mm. Diba? And yeah. that was when you went to Poland, all the more you shown during the preliminary mm -hmm. competition. So I was oh, she really, she still, she really had the glow. Oh, thank you. Yeah, pero, pero no finals night, kinabahan kami. Ako din, no? <laughs> Oo, kasi parang, Kasi top 12 na kayo, di ba? Yeah. Top 12 na kayo, so rampa kayo in swim. Tapos sabi ko, when it was your third, di ba, you were all coming out in by pairs ba? Or... Sa swimsuit? Oo. Um, not really by pairs, but once the the girl in front of you is about to walk back, that's when you go out na. Oo. Mm -hmm. And when it was your turn to come out, parang sabi namin, bakit, bakit parang ano, parang... parang Parang ang tamlay ni Pauline. Parang kinabahan kami kasi syempre, let's face it, when, when, when we talk about Miss Supranational, kailan rampadora ka talaga sa stage. Mm -hmm. So, how would you make out of it, your performance during that time? At that segment, particular segment of the competition? 
Ah, uh, Because usually during rehearsals, they want everything snappy. So mm -hmm. I think maybe for the swimsuit part, I was still in rehearsal mode. Because I remember reading a message from Mama Mikey, Nak, take your time on stage. <laughs> ah, <laughs> take your time on stage. Like, it's okay if you, if you stay if a few counts longer than what you're supposed to, that's fine. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, after that, I realized, oh, no, this is the finals. Like, wait, reset. I gotta, I, I'll, I'll walk slower the next time. Oh, that was it. Yeah, you took that your was time. It. Yeah, for the finals, for the gown at least, uh -oh. and for the other segments now. But for swimsuit, parang I, yeah, swimsuit seemed like such a quick segment for me. But maybe also that's because I was maybe walking a bit too fast and didn't take enough time sa established points uh -huh. for for me to like take a pose and maybe transition to another one. Top twenty-four. Yes, top 24. Yeah. So that top, was on yeah. your way to top twelve. Yes. Next speech kayo. Oh my god, yeah. But I said, 30 seconds, how can you 20. make tw oh, 20? How can, you, <laughs> how can you come up with a decent speech in just 20 seconds? It was a gets, yeah, but then you were. It you was a it, no. You kind of stutter, was, you were delivering it. Oh, yeah. Good. Because I, I, I knew what I wanted to say. When we were told that you're going to give a 20 second like, pitch uh, to the judges, as to why you should win or why you're here, for example, I really immediately knew what I wanted to talk about, about overcoming body shaming, about being a three-peter in, in my own country, and about dedication, mm -hmm. the dedication that has brought me up to that point. And it, it was just a matter of pacing my own voice in such a way that it would fit in the 20 seconds. But I already knew concisely what I wanted to say. And then when I noticed that the bells seemed to ring quite early. Cause ah, parang talaga? Quite early. Because uh, I, I had a feeling, I don't know how they, how they, or at what point they started the timer, when the host stops speaking or when the girl says her first word. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what your thoughts are also on that. Like, when should the timer start? After the mm -hmm. host starts speaking or when the girl says her first word? So, um, after, I, after, I think, was it, Miss India, I think, was uh, before me, and she wasn't able to finish her si prog prog. She wasn't able uh -oh. to finish her her pitch within the given time. So, I was like, "That's prog prog. She's so good at speaking." So, like, in my head, I was like, "Okay, I gotta talk a little bit faster to make sure that I make it into the twenty seconds, because they'll really remove the mic uh -oh. or stop the audio uh -oh. for that mic." And I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna risk not being able to finish my sentence or my thought. But I still don't get why 20 seconds. <laughs> I guess yung... that's the challenge there. Oh. That's oh. the challenge there. So, nga, I'm glad that you mentioned Prague, Prague. Mm -mm. Sino sa mga, at that point, top 12, you were looking sa inyong mga natitirang mga girls. Mm -mm. Who do you think you were considering your main rival or rivals for mm -hmm. the, rival for the finals a... night? It's such a <laughs> strong tinik, word. <laughs> yung tinik sa ano, sa well, goal mong manalo. Of course, I was really close to Prague Prague and I knew how hard she worked for it. And I love how, how, how she speaks. And she has a very commanding presence also, especially when she speaks. And of course, Peru, she was such a performer. And she, she also had so much passion in her to be there. Like that's something all of us saw. So definitely, uh, definitely those. And of course, uh, Andrea, mm -hmm. Ecuador, because she was a performer too. Like, even during rehearsals, it was always 110% performance level for her. So, so nung tinawag na kayo sa top five, tapos hindi natawag si Peru tsaka si India, mm -mm. Did, it, did it somehow make you feel, ah, okay, nawala na yung mga, at least nawala na yung mga, yung mga, nabawasan na ako ng tinik na nararamdaman because... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not really, because it's, you're still competing at that point eh, and you don't know, I mean, we're, I don't remember actually being informed as to how the judges or the scoring would, would work, like if it's being brought back to zero, if it's overall performance and stuff like that. So there's really no time to become complacent, even if you feel like the ones that you thought were your um, rivals, as you said, were no longer in the top five. So there's really no time for complacency there. So it, I, I never really like relaxed a little bit. I, I was really just still focused uh, up to the end. 
Bili pa ako sa focus na yun. Kasi <laughs> right, right before you were asked, or after, or during the time the host was telling you the question that you needed to answer, nakikipag small talk ka pa kay ano, nakikip, dun sa host na lalaki. So sabi ko, <laughs> yeah, because said, yeah, because he said breathe. So like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tapos buti may presence of mind ka pa, naririnig mo pa talaga on your periphery yung sinasabi ni, ni Joan Strauss, mm-hmm. yung female host. So sabi ko, Pauline, sana narinig mo na mabuti yung tanong. Tapos yun nga, when you finally, when you, when the mic was finally handed to you, ayun na, you finally spoke and spoke Mm-mm. and spoke. Yeah, that was my one, I mean, one of the prayers that I really sent up that night was like, really, Lord, give me the chance to speak tonight. And the, the first time I prayed, that was, of course, going into top 12, because top 12, or from top 12, going to top 5, because that's when you had your first chance to hold the mic and say your pitch. For the 20 seconds of Lord, I really just want my message to come across tonight. Please allow me to hold the mic. Yeah. Do you think you were 